I am very, very happy to also inform you that we have a special address by our platinum partner, Google. Um, and this speaker that's coming up next is going to be delivering the address, is the country head of Google Malaysia. And he was amongst one of the very first Malaysia hires for Google when it became operations in the when it began operating in the country in 2011. Unfortunately, he could not be here today due to family obligations. But do not despair; he was so excited that he sent over a recording of his address. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, here is Mark Wu. Very good morning, everyone. Selamat pagi semua. My name is Mark, and I'm the country head of Google Malaysia. First and foremost, I want to extend my, my warmest thanks and appreciation to the event organizers, the Star Media Group, for hosting PRCOM 4.0 and having us, Google, be very much part of uh, today. So thank you very much. And I want to start off by saying that Google is committed to support journalism and a news ecosystem. A statement from me just probably won't do much, but throughout this next 10 minutes, I'll highlight some examples, initiative, financial aid funds, right, and features that illustrates that we are committed to support the journalism and the news ecosystem. Now, every time someone searches on Google, there are thousands, if not millions, of web pages with helpful information. And when Malaysians look for news, the pages, videos they find can be from large news publishers or specialty digital outlets. And our job at Google is to be helpful and sort through those and connect people with the most relevant pieces of information. But at the same time, we recognize that the internet has changed the way people find and access information and that publishers are facing challenging business environments as a result. And all that matters deeply to us and all that matters deeply to Google. That's why a few years ago in March 2018, we launched the Google News Initiative or GNI. It's a flagship global program to help journalism thrive in the digital age. And since that day, we have worked closely with industry players to address key challenges in digital skills and publisher revenue. I'll give you three examples. Number one, we launched news consumer insights to help publishers identify metrics that matter to their businesses and most importantly, turn them into actionable insights to grow their revenue goals. And number two, we expanded this approach with real-time content insights to help journalists make data-driven editorial decisions. Number three, and last one, we introduced news tagging guide to help publishers hone in even further on identifying engagement metrics. Thousands of news organizations across 130 countries are benefiting from this and they have, they have seen increased reader loyalty and profit, profitability from using these tools. And on the topic of transparency, especially on Google Ad Manager and Display Ads, we have simplified how advertising revenue is managed and we've increased transparency for everyone in the ecosystem by moving Google Ad Manager to a first price auction, as well as continuously sharing the steps that we're taking to ensure transparency, choice, and control in advertising. 
we've also invested in our defenses against ad fraud in several ways, which includes better identification of policy violating behavior at the account level and new tools for managing and controlling ads display. And on funding, on financial aid to the industry, we recently launched the Journalism Emergency Relief Fund to deliver financial aid to thousands of news publishers globally. And these news publishers are impacted by COVID-19. So this funding was open to publishers who were affected by the pandemic and are producing original news for local communities during this time of crisis. And the amount of disbursement, the, the, the disbursement amount ranges from the low thousands US dollars for small hyper local newsrooms to tens of thousands of dollars for larger newsrooms. And in Asia alone, we had over 2000 applications and we are currently supporting more than 800 new organizations with the Journalism Emergency Relief Fund. And on the topic of innovation and pivoting to the digital age, in Asia, we saw the second installment of the Google News Initiative Innovation Challenge. It focuses on ways to increase reader engagement, which ultimately leads to greater loyalty and willingness to pay for content. And out of the 250 strong submissions we received across multiple topics like user-generated content, UGC, community management, fact-checking, and the use of machine learning to tackle business challenges, we had 18 of those 250 submissions selected to take their ideas forward. And we recently took another step forward by announcing Pay for Curation, a new licensing program to pay publishers for premium high quality content for brand new news experience that we'll be launching later this year. It's still early days, it's only launched, we'll only be launching in several countries across the world. We don't have all the information lined up at the moment, but our commitment to work with the news industry and journalism profession, profession is resolute. And, and lastly, on, on fake news, disinformation, misinformation, and uh, authoritative information, on YouTube, we have introduced the breaking news and top news shelves, developing news information panels, and all this was launched within the last six months with the intention to make sure that the users are exposed, users on our platforms are exposed to news content from legit and authoritative sources. And apart from that, Google News, we have launched the full coverage function where readers can access a non-personalized in-depth view of a particular news cycle. And information panels on YouTube now have topical context and publisher context. So these are just some of the mechanisms we have developed to provide more context and more utility to users by connecting them to legit and authoritative publishers. So in, in closing, I hope that these commitments that Google is demonstrating signifies that the news and quality journalism is top priority for us. May sound cliche, but we know that success can only be achieved by working together. So I, I look forward to continuing our collaboration 
with the news, news industry to build a stronger future for journalism and the PR and communications industry. And allow me to end by wishing everyone attending the PR and Com 4.0 a productive and highly interactive few days. And in the meantime, please be healthy, stay safe, and be well. Thank you. Sekian. Terima kasih. Thank you, Mark, for this special address. And if any of you have noticed, I really like the cheeky uh, YouTube t-shirt that he had on. You know, It's a very nice wink and nod to how Google climbed up the ladder to become one of the biggest tech companies of today. Uh, we've heard from you know Esther, who's amazing, and we've heard from Mark, who's amazing. Um, but ladies and gentlemen, it's just getting started. So if you could stay with me just for a little while, we have a special treat for you towards the end of this session. Okay, moving on. Now, we've, I've told you before that PRCOM 4.0 will take on really, really hot and spicy topics. When the team first put their thoughts into curating this program, there was one key question or objective we wanted to address and achieve. Communication and brand reputation management are one of the most conventional by default practice of any setting, situation, as well as organization or business background. Everyone is talking about it and championing it, teaching us to write and communicate appropriately. But how and where can we or who can share any updated perspectives and actually practical insights that are relevant in the current setting? This was the question that we asked ourselves, and in the next few days, you will see the fruit of our, uh, of our brainstorming session. And it's really a wonderful powwow lineup in store. Um, so like in the morning session for tomorrow, which is the day two, we will first share about the new role that press release plays these days in an era of fake news and paid media stories. Then we want to address the good old issue of transparency in today's crisis communication against the convenience of internet access and bring your own device practices. The morning session will end with a panel of senior journalism masters who will deliberate the stand of journalists as communication gatekeepers in a post-truth era. Where there is a fine line between what is true and what's not is barely visible. And tomorrow afternoon, we're going to be talking about digital hype. Social media used to be the talk of the town, but is that even enough when everyone is also saturating the social media space? What else can we do more effectively in terms of social engagement? We're going to also be talking about data analytics, which is a key propelling brand communication and reputation tool. So how much and in which areas can data actually help us? And wrapping up day two program is an industry panel with a few senior communications practitioners who will discuss the usual tension in juggling between senior management, customers, society, and the law. And the fun does not stop there. On the third day, we will think about the situation. Imagine this in your head, right? Today, a spokesperson gets caught off guard at the most unforeseen circumstances that one can ever predict. And we want you to stay updated with the ever-evolving media landscape. Get an overview of the media industry today so you won't get caught off guard. You know, learn how it functions, current demands, and maximize PR opportunities. And learn about always being on the record ready, verbally and non-verbally. Most importantly, our speakers, trainers, and industry practitioners will also spend time to address some of your questions and concerns during the live session. So remember those notes that I asked you to take earlier? Take them out now and ask away. We are so excited for, I am personally so excited to be able to follow you on this journey in the next two, three days. And what about you? Are you excited more about the topics on the second day or the third day or maybe both? And if you are, we have a very special treat Right? If, you have, you're, if you're watching this on live and you have not signed up for day two or day three, if you sign up by the end of today, you will get an all access pass to both days with only 88 ringgit, at only 88 ringgit. All you need to do is scan the QR code on the top right of your screen, 
that has been there the whole time. Or you can go to bit.ly slash star PR com, which is bit.ly slash star S-T-A-R-P-R-C-O-M-M. Or you can email us at events at the star dot com dot my for existence. And don't forget to get your promotion. Type in the promo code lucky for you. That is L-U-C-K-Y four and then a U. Or on the top left of the ticket, sorry. So enter the promo code lucky for you on the top left of the ticket selection page to enjoy this special, special rate just for you. So day two and day three are only by exclusive effect, um, access on WebEx. While I've enjoyed a lot talking to you and talking to everybody, unfortunately, the second and third days are going to be closed off. But if you sign up now, it's only going to be 88 bucks, so that's value for your money. And it's not too late to do that. Please also share this with your friends, your peers, your colleagues, your bosses and your friends. Anybody that you think could benefit from this webinar. Um, I'm signing out now, but this page will stay live for the next 10 minutes. And I thank you and hopefully I will see you and some fresh faces tomorrow.